Okay, folks, welcome to the channel. Um, we're going to do, we, I say, I'm going to do a cursory review on uh, some 9mm ammo. Um, I have acquired my first 9mm. And I want to uh, say what? Oops, oh, excuse me. Our camera mount here won't move. Okay, here we go. And um, this is a review on some nine millimeter because this is my first nine millimeter handgun I've ever owned. And. Um, so, I've had a lot of experience with 38 Special and some, you know, 22, but no real experience with the 9mm, which I just acquired. Um, I just acquired my first 9mm handgun. The Smith & Wesson MNP 9mm Shield is what it's called. And... Uh, that's the way it's listed. So it is of the M&P series, which means military and police. So this was kind of designed for carry by cops and by military people. In other words, that kind of reliability was built into this gun. It is a polymer frame gun, as you can see. I've done some fancy painting on it, just to kind of dress it up, kind of like the Tron gun. Uh, in case anybody is wondering why I'm wearing the mask, it has been protest of the Harris County rules. It says we have to wear a mask indoors at all times. Okay, well, I'll wear one indoors all the time. You want I'm doing my videos. How about that stupidity? But anyway, that's, no, that's another subject. So, um, this is my first 9mm. It's a really, fairly light gun compared to carrying a 38 Special uh, Combat Masterpiece. Model 15, in case anybody Smith & Wesson wants to know, because I've always carried Smith guns except for the Ruger target pistol I tried to carry. Which was kind of nuts because it's really heavy. <laughs> and uh, I carried that for quite a while, believe it or not. 22 target pistol. And um, just a little heavy. And with the current environment, I decided to move on up to something a little more effective. And lightly lighter to carry than the 38 Special or the 22, which is, like I said, is quite heavy target pistol for crying out loud. So, my first ammo I got, uh, let me turn this off, turn it back on, I want this mode to be in uh, we're going to measure these what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off by measuring the weight of the cartridges. Now, people think, you know, you think, what the hell is he doing? Well, part of carrying a weapon all the time, like I plan on doing, is nobody considers the weight of the ammo. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> um, when you're carrying, for instance, I mean, even the polymer Glock, you got a 15 round stack magazine and you got it stacked up with 15 rounds of this which is 147 grain jacket you know full metal jacket the jacket's full metal on in a nine millimeter cartridge case uh that weight adds up and if you don't believe it i'm fixing to show you how much of a difference it can actually make. Even 
with a polymer handgun. Because anybody that carries one for a long time, long period of time, will tell you if they're honest, that you got to learn to carry that gun so it doesn't bother you, irritate you, cause some kind of irritation the way you're carrying it. Believe me, this is a true fact, and anybody who will not tell you that is lying to you because they don't carry a gun every day. Concealed, that is. Carrying one on your hips, another story. Did that too for a long time. Uh, the next bullet I'm going to bring out here, I brought that one out too early, is one from LAX Ammunition, because we're going to talk about bullet, whoops, we're going to talk about bullet effectiveness too. I bought these as defense loads, um, and we'll talk about them, because I'm going to weigh them, we're going to talk about each one, as I pull them out. And weigh them. Now, these are supposed to be defense loads from a company here in Houston, Texas called PMC. Now I didn't know that PMC made this ammo. I had no idea. I bought this from LAX ammo out in California. But they make it, the company that makes this right here in Houston. And, well, I should say right here. I'm in Cypress, Texas, but, you know, Houston's just down the road. They got a Houston address. I'm sure they're not in the city of Houston. But um, they make really good bulk ammo. I have probably fired over a thousand rounds of their 223. Never had a problem. Never hang fire. Nothing. Works flawlessly. You know, it's a little dirty but not near as bad as some of the other ammo out there. That's a lot worse. I don't need to name names. Everybody knows who they are. <clears throat> and then the last one is these puppies. Ultralight ammo. <clears throat> Which kind of like, okay. Which brings me to this. That there has been for a long time a search for the perfect defense or offense load that will give you maximum transfer of energy. Number one important. Maximum transfer of energy for that particular load without over penetrating and causing a problem. Now, for many years, the cure to this was to carry big, heavy bullets, the biggest you could carry in a jacket at hollow point, with a small charge behind it that would not propel the bullet through the target and into anything around it, particularly and especially in an aircraft cabin at 30,000 feet. Well, friends and neighbors, I'm here to tell you, I think they fucking found it. Excuse my print. The folks at Liberty Ammunition, I think, have hit the nail on the head. I haven't even gone out and looked up this bullet to see what this thing is. Because I'm going to tell you right now, this is something different. This is not your daddy's fine millimeter. This is something totally different. This is a two-piece cartridge case, for crying out loud. And I haven't even looked at to see what the bullet material is just yet, but all I know is it's starburst fragmentation. <clears throat> Anybody in the bullet world knows what that means. It's bad news. But anyway, what I'm going to do is we're first going to weigh these puppies, and then I'm going to talk about them. Like I said, one of the things that people want to talk about, you know, when they're carrying a gun is how bad it is, how powerful it is, how many rounds it carries. Horseshit. <clears throat> Excuse me again. Uh, the most effective thing about any gun should be how well it works, like anything else. Is it going to do the job that you expect it to do? If that is self-defense, and partner, 
you better be carrying around in that sucker that gives you self-defense. Because if it doesn't, then why are you carrying a gun? And you better be willing to use that self-defense without any hesitation. Because if you don't, the criminal you're facing just might take it away from and use it on you. And if you don't think that's possible, <laughs> you too. It happens. Anyway, um, this is a very sensitive scale, as you can see. I'm going to zoom down on it here. We're going to get off the camera and get on the scale here. And as you can see, excuse my uh, camera adjusting here. And as you can see, it's right now saying it's four thousandths of a gram. It's measuring, I don't know what it's measuring, but it's not anything but the air. So we're going to tear that and step it up to zero. So now we got it zeroed out or whatever. And we're going to put on a bullet. We're going to start with the 147 grain. We're going to put that stander right up here in the middle. And you can see, I hope you can see, that says 13.95 grams. Nearly 14 grams. 147 full jacket hollow, full jacket, uh, full metal jacket, excuse me. I'm getting, over, I'm getting, I'm getting excited here. <clears throat> anyway, yeah, full metal jacket, 147 grain from Federal Ammunition called American Eagle. It's their American Eagle line. Again, that's a bulk manufactured ammo. Um, then there's the PMC defense load which is not bulk manufactured, and they are not cheap, friends and neighbors. Ooh, doggy. Anyway, we're going to pop that 124 grain starburst fragmentation jacketed hollow point on there, and that's exactly how it's listed, SFJHP. No, SFHP, excuse me, Starburst Fragmentation Hollow Point. But it could be, you could put jacketed on it because it is jacketed hollow point. It is a JHP. But a Starburst Fragmentation JHP. <clears throat> now, I don't know if these are the Hornady defense loads because Hornady makes something called the defense loads and that's what it has in there for a bullet. It's a Starburst Fragmentation. I do not know if this is a Hornady bullet. Did not look it up. I haven't done any research on these other than what I'm showing you right now. So, you know, if you want to find out more about these bullets, hey, go learn you something. Because um, it's out there. These people blow their horn really well on their stuff. But I'm just doing this as a cursory admonition thing, and I wanted to go out and look at it. One of the things I didn't show on that particular bullet, and I will here now, is they have a bullet pack on here. Back that up, come in. They actually have the bullet path on this rascal. Will you look at that? What the bullet will do, now they don't talk about what the barrel length is here or anything. They say bullet path in inches. And they're saying out to 50 yards, it has a bullet rise of point, you know, nearly an inch at 25 yards. And then at 50 yards, she's dead flat. It's saying. Now look, friends and neighbors, this bullet's going to give you a 50-yard flat path, basically. Uh, <clears throat> whoa. If you're going to be shooting somebody at 50 yards, well, you must be Bill Hitchcock in re reincarnated because nobody's going to be doing a defense shooting at that range. Ever. I doubt it seriously. 50 yards? The half the length of a football field? Oh, no way in hell. And at 75 yards, it only drops basically three inches. Now look. That's serious business. 100 yards, 7.8 inches. 
Now, if you're a pistol guy like me, and you know this information, then you can just compensate for that at 100 yards and pop people all, pop things all day long. Serious. If that's accurate, out of a standard 4-inch barrel, 3-inch barrel, you can get that kind of accuracy. Well, <laughs> get you some. Anyway, uh, that's just bullet accuracy. We're not talking about effectiveness here. From what I understand on these particular starburst fragmentations, whatever they hit that's organic is bad news. With a standard, one of these starbursts, this is a jacket hollow point. Now the next bullet I'm going to go to is the ultralight. And I was particularly interested by this bullet because, like I said, there's been this... There's been this move on for a long time to find the perfect defense load, especially with carrying ammo in an airplane cabin. Son, I'm going to tell you, this is it. This has got to be it. From every standpoint of the almost perfect carpet, because there's no such thing as a perfect one. Let's, oh, looks like my meter went off here. I'll turn her back on here. I forgot to show the weight on this thing on the other bullet. Okay, there it is. We put the 124 back up there again. I'm talking over my, uh, my my test here. Put the 124 back in there. It's 12.2 grams. Actually, 12.3 if you want to round the numbers up. Because this thing does measure down to tenth, hundredth, thousandth of a gram. This scale is meant to measure chemical powders. That's what I bought it for. For like measuring powder to reload. You want extreme accuracy on that stuff, especially with certain powders. A tenth of a grain can make a difference. A couple of tenths of a grain can make a difference now that cartridge is going to respond. Believe me, it will. But anyway, so this one here weighs 12.3. And we said the other one weighed what? Let's go back to it. That was 12.3 at 124 grains. And this one's 13.9, basically 14 grams. So that one's almost, this one here, is almost 2 grams lighter than the bullet jacket hollow point. Now we're talking about the entire cartridge here, not just the bullet. But we're going to get into bullet weights, which is in grains. We're going to talk about that too, and what the differences are here in a second. In fact, I'll demonstrate what the differences are. Anyway, this is, like I said, is the ultralight cartridge. 50 grain bullet. You heard it. 50 grain bullet. I'll show you the box again. Mr. 50 grain bullet weighs 6 grams. Less than half the weight of the heaviest bullet, the jacket, the full metal jacket. Half the weight of the 124. Almost exactly half the weight on the 124 grain bullet. Now just do the math on those real quick. Put, multiply that times 15. Well, it still comes out half the weight no matter what. So if you're carrying 15 of these in your Glock, or in my case, 8 of these in my little Smith & Wilson shield, you got some serious firepower here serious deadly firepower because I'm going to read off now the specs on this particular bullet because this is really what we're doing here we're talking about this puppy right here you can see the deep cavity that thing has now I still don't know what this bullet's made of it's not made of lead hello that's not a lead bullet not that I can see It may be some lead in it, but it ain't a lead bullet like that 124 right next to it. Here's the skivvy on the box. There you go, it just went into focus. I'm going to take a screenshot of that, go right ahead. In the picture you can see that's a two-piece cartridge case. 
Still don't know what that's made of. I suspect that the, that the butt of the cartridge where the firing pin is and the bullet are the same material and the cartridge case is nickel. I suspect. <clears throat> anyway, it says here, the first thing it says at the top of the list is 2,000 feet per second. Again. 2,000 feet per second? Out of a 9 millimeter handgun? Oh, I gotta see this on the chronograph. Trust me. <laughs> the doubting Thomas here says, oh, yeah, okay, whatever you say. Uh, the next figure it says here is 450 FPE. Now, that stands for 400 foot-pounds of energy, FPE. 450 pounds of foot-pounds foot of energy. I'm going to tell anybody that knows anything about ballistics, that's a whomper stomper that you're getting that kind of foot-pounds of energy out of a 50-grain bullet. Stop the presses. And here comes the next good part. Two inch dispersion at 25 meters. Again, here it is in print. I ain't making this up. Two inch dispersion at 25 meters. Now what that means is this bullet creates a two inch channel when it starbursts. It creates a two inch channel at 25 meters, which is basically 25 yards. Wow. So no telling what that, because it, now I'll explain something to you about wound channels. Wound channels get bigger as the bullet travels further. Hello? They don't get smaller. So if this thing's cutting a two-inch channel on anything at t up to 25 meters, I assume that's what they mean. <laughs> wow. That's bad news. You got hit in the arm with this? It's going to take your arm clean off. I mean, literally. If it hits the bone of your arm or your leg, it will disconnect your arm, your, your limbs from your body. It will cut your bones clean in half. Yes. That's what that means. It'll cut major bones clean in half. Disconnect them. Literally. Like getting hit with an axe. 12 inch penetration at one foot. Now here's what that means. That means this bullet does not over penetrate. 12 inch penetration at one foot. What that means is anything greater than one foot, it ain't going more than one foot at anything greater than one foot. Now, if that ain't the perfect airline cabin round, I don't know what else is. Deadly, effective. Reduced recoil, deep, Cavity projectile, starburst fragmentation. Friends and neighbors, if you're looking for the perfect defense load made in America, here it is from Liberty Ammo. It took me a while to get my hands on this, but God bless me, Lord knows this is well worth the, the time and the money that it took to get my hands on this. Because I think here's the perfect cartridge right here for 9 millimeter. Now the other other rounds, Liberty's making rounds for the other uh, pistols like the 40 and the 45, like this. Oh God help you! And anyone who gets hit with one of those, they're toast. Toast. I mean anywhere. Anywhere you get hit with that bullet, you're done. Chest cavity? Forget it. Extremities, you'll bleed out before your MS, before your MS gets there. Literally, you will bleed out from the wound in any extremity that this hits you with. 
whoever you hit with that, they'll bleed out before EMS can get there. Here it is. I'm calling it the perfect cartridge. I'm sure I'll get some uh, some comments on that, <laughs> and I hope I do. But uh, I want to see some people out on the internet do reviews on this, because I'm going to do a shooting review on it. Trust me, I'm going to blow some shit up with this. Believe me. And um, I'm going to put it on video. But I'm calling this out as the perfect defense cartridge. In all my years of shooting, I ain't never seen anything like this with these kind of specs. And if this is what they're saying is true, like I said, God help anybody that gets shot with one of these. They're toast. They better just, just call the meat wagon right away because there ain't going to be no need for EMS to get hit with this. And I say anywhere. I mean anywhere. Shot in the foot. You're going to blow somebody's foot clean off with this. And again, they'll bleed out before EMS gets there. Because there'll be so much destruction. This is a highly destructive bullet. Probably the most destructive I've seen so far advertised. I haven't seen it act yet, but I'm going to go test it against the 124 Meat Masher, I call it. Because that's what I call them. The Hornady Pencil, as I call them the Meat Mashers. Because it's exactly what they are. So, uh, if this baby lives up to the Hornady Meat Mashers, <laughs> yeah, baby. We're talking some serious stuff here now. But that is it right there. The Liberty Ammo Ultralights. And, and you've seen the different weights on them. That uh, it does make a difference in carrying these things. Because, uh, like I said, I'm carrying them now. And it does make, I can see the difference already. You know, between carrying that heavier ammo, which I was carrying the 147s because I didn't have anything else at the time when I first got the gun. Haven't even fired the gun yet. Haven't even had a chance to shoot it. So I will be shooting this gun for the first time and trying out the ammo. Smith and Wilson shoot. And we'll see. We shall see what happens. Here I am looking at the darn monitor again. I gotta stop that. Look at the camera. Uh, it's hard to get into that when you're trying to see where you are on the monitor. I need one of those fancy monitors that the radio stations, TV stations have that's right above the camera so it doesn't look like you're looking at the camera but you're looking at the monitor at the same time. Or have a monitor over here somewhere on the camera tripod because it does help to know where you are in the frame when you're shooting yourself. <laughs> uh, you know, so you've got to look every now and then at the camera monitor. So, anyway, um, that's, the re that's my cursory review. I will be posting this to YouTube shortly. Um, and uh, I, I hope uh, everybody learns something here. I learn something every time I go out and, and you know, look at ammo, because I hadn't even heard about this ultralight ammo before. Uh, most of the ultralight or lightweight ammo that I have always been experienced with has been stuff that you don't want to use because of overpenetration. Yes, it's effective, but my God, if the bullet goes and bounces around the room three times before it comes back at you, like has happened with 357 Magnum to a Louisiana State Trooper who I personally met and told me that story. Well, 357 Magnum, 110 grain, jacketed hollow point. Went right through the subject. Went around the room and damn near hit him. Stuck in the wall behind him. Literally stuck in the wall. They pried it out. True story. Uh, the reason I found that out because I asked him why he was carrying the Smith & Wesson Model 29 44 Magnum. And he told me that story. Big bullet. Big heavy slow bullet. You know, the maximum expansion, maximum transfer of energy. No overpenetration. 44 Magnum loaded properly was that bullet. But it could overpenetrate too if you load it up really hot. But if you load it up with 24 grams of 2400, jacketed hollow point, mm, well, you have a serious, serious meat master, as I call it. So, 
on that note, we're going to, uh, like I said, we'll uh, end of it. We'll do this on uh, at a range. I don't know which range I'll be using just yet. I hope to use a one I'm familiar with. And uh, if that happens, uh, you'll get to see that also. But for now, this is Tommy Gun signing off. And like, comment, subscribe, all that YouTuber stuff, donations. You want to do that? Let me know. We can set that up. Man, have a great day.